What is going on guys? It's Nick from Surf Casting the Island and today I'm going to be talking about why surf casting and fishing as a whole is commitment. And uh, from personal experience, um, ever since the age of two or three, I would say, um, I've had a fishing rod and a tackle box in my hand, so pretty much ever since I was able to walk. <laughs> Um, so taking the consideration of the math, you know, the past 21 years, this addiction has only gotten greater and greater for better or worse. Um, in terms of better and worse, I'll, I'll get more into that and how that's affected my life, both positively and negatively. Um, but I believe the reason why the addiction, the tug is the drug, as many people say, um, has gotten greater is because I have a greater understanding of wind, moon, tide, beat pattern, water temperature, time of year, how all of these factors play a role in determining where I'm going to fish, when I'm going to fish, and why I'm going to fish there. You see, fishing is a lot more than tying um, a hook on to a line or bait, a plug, whatever you throw, and throw it out there and hope to catch a fish. It also goes back to the saying that 5% of the fishermen catch 95% of the fishermen, while 95% of the fishermen only catch 5% of the fish. So if you think about that in context, there's a very small percentage of guys out there and particularly I'm talking about surf casters in this matter, that know where to fish and why and when, because they have so much experience based on all of these factors, predetermined factors based on stuff you cannot control that is out of your control. Um, you, you know, you can't um, control the cards you're dealt per se, but with the more knowledge you acquire and how much you're willing to sacrifice and endure in this journey will make you a better surf caster. Um, and yeah, it's taken, you know, a lot of time to figure out these fish. One of my biggest goals is, is to be in that top 5%, you know, not saying I am or not, it's all based on perspective. The only person I compete with is me, myself, and I. I really don't like to compete with anyone else because everyone has different goals, both long-term and short-term, and what they want to do and what route they want to go in the surf casting community, whether they want to be um, you know, very well-known on YouTube, want to write journals, do seminars. You know, I'm still trying to find my way in terms of what I want to do. I felt that the channel was a good start to get exposure um and yeah i'll go more into depth of how you know this journey of the past 21 years of you know chasing all these fish around has really um affected my life so if you take into consideration friend groups um i've had a handful you know i have my going out friends my fishing friends my uh basketball and volleyball friends they're all based on, hence, uh, the common activities, you know, what we share in common. Um, of course, I'm not really, you know, if my fishing friends aren't really into, um, per se, going out, I'm not going to ask my fishing friends to go out. I'm going to ask them to catch a tide at, you know, 2, 3 in the morning, you know, during the week or on the weekend. Um, and same applies. I'm not going to ask my friends that, you know, go out and slam down drinks on the weekend to come and fish because that's not what they like to do. Um, and I don't expect them to like it because everyone has their own interests. Um, but the truth of the matter is, and what I'm going to touch upon is, once you get uh, more deeply connected to um, this, particularly this style of fishing and fishing as a whole even, um you'll begin to realize you'll start to lose a lot of touch with other groups because it's a lot more involved than people think. Um, if you have it in like, if you have it like I have it, it's bad. It's literally in your blood. You feel it. It's either in you or it's not. Um, it's to the point, you know, when I'm sick, I would go fishing. 
When I was sad, I would go fishing. When I was happy, I would go fishing. Um, when I was stressed out about work or if I had family issues or I had um, relationship issues, I would go fishing. And ever since, you know, I started, I realized it was a coping mechanism for a lot of the undertones going on in my life at the time. Um, and that's something, you know, people don't really understand is, you know, a lot of the time, um, as much as I like to be around people, uh, I also enjoy being alone or being with, you know, one or two people and catching a tide late at night. You're, um, when you're doing this type of fishing, you're waking up all different hours, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., getting up at all different hours in the middle of the night, fishing up over the night, and <laughs> you begin to realize night and day is very, very, <laughs> there's a very thin line. Um, there's not really much of a difference after a point. And you'll begin to realize your fishing is a problem, especially when you start fishing more at night, when you can't really tell the difference of whether it's too late at night or it's um, really early in the morning. So <laughs> a lot of guys refer to that, refer to that um, as the non-human hours. So come around 2, 3 a.m., it's, it's, it could technically be very early in the morning or very late at night. And um, it just goes for anything in life. Um, if you want to be good at something, if you want to be great at it, you have to put all your eggs in one basket pretty much. Um, I remember last year, so the fall of 2020, I had a break in between my two jobs. I had a month, month and a half break because my job was seasonal outside. I would work pretty much from Memorial Day until... October or so, first week of October, when it started to get a little chill in the air. And then I would try to find something in between that and the winter time. But that particular year, you know, the economy wasn't doing too well, so on and so forth. Unemployment was pretty high. So pretty much I took a sabbatical, um, you know, a hiatus. And I literally fished every single day, um, twice a day, pretty much. The month of October and half of November and it took a lot out of me you know you're talking about two tides a day sometimes almost three tides a day and that's you know you figure a tide is six hours right if you're fishing three tides in a day sometimes when the bite gets really good or you're uncertain of when the bigger fish are going to move through well, that's 18 hours that's three quarters of your day done um, then take into consideration what do you do the other six hours where you have to get home, so on and so forth. So you don't have full six hours of rest. Sometimes you're working on two, three hours a week, if that. And um, it has really changed me in the sense that when you get really strong into this community, because it's not a big community, it's very, very small. Um, people think it's this huge, oh, fishing is this huge thing. The surf casting community is a very small world. I've, you know, people you never thought you would ever meet and think of the, these great, like, you know, people so out of touch that you'd never be able to meet. I've met plenty of, you know, very well-known surf casters and bumped into them. Um, Fred Galafaro, God rest his soul. Um, John Skinner, another, you know, great surf, ca uh, surf cast that could bend the rod. Um, and it just goes to show you there's a lot of opportunity in this industry. And, um, yeah, I'd say the past, I want to say three, four years, I've gotten rather serious in terms of chasing these stripers around the beach. Of course, I've done it since a very young age, you know, eight, nine, ten on the boat catching stripers but like i said i've mentioned in previous videos and lectures that um it wasn't until you know late high school early college now i'm out of college but around that time where i really started targeting these fish from the shore and um like i said i've come to realize there's a lot more to the game than i thought a lot more meets the eye and um that's the sacrifice of the game when you want to target big fish, I've talked about targeting big fish um, with all the factors and the baits and the moons and the tides and the winds and the structure, the water temperature. If you take that all into consideration and you're looking for maybe one bite a night, you got to be strong up here. 
and that's something you know you know not everyone could sit out there on a rock for six hours at a time and hope that happened it's, it takes a very very patient person um with a clear head at the time to you know really undergo something like that and um over everything like i said i feel like fishing as a whole has taught me patience and all great things come in time um and it all comes with hard work of course because nothing is handed to you no one cares about your excuses um no one cares about why you snapped that fish off why did you straighten that hook out um why did you have a you know bad hook bad line bad knot bad war inadequate tackle real failures broken rod tip you name it i've seen it um that doesn't happen to me anymore you know I, i'm not going to make those excuses you know there's going to be there's no fish out in that ocean that's going to get the best of me um <clears throat> especially the striped bass i love the striped bass because i always talk about them and it's by far hands down one of my favorite if not my favorite species to target um but sadly to say i have lost touch with people from my past because of this um addiction and um you know i regret i regret it but you know it happens i i don't mean it on purpose because you know everyone goes in their own direction um but like i said it's about like i said over and over again it's about what you want to put in how much time you want to put into these fish and that's when you're going to get rewarded um <clears throat> i care i <laughs> You know, now that I'm working, I don't really have the luxury to go out there on a Monday morning at 7 a.m. really to catch a tide for an hour or two. I got to be in the office rather early, but um, it's physically impossible to catch every tide. You can't split yourself in half and say, I'm going to fish the outgoing at Shinnecock and then once that tide runs out, I'm going to hit the the top of the incoming further west or whatever it is like if you're fishing and then you want to go all the way to reese park it's not going to happen you're not going to get there in an hour if there's, there's big fish there too <coughs> so it all comes down to making decisions and proper execution because especially in the fall run which we're in the midst of um as far as i'm concerned you're not really these fish are very unpredictable they're not like the spring where you could just go to a spot like a rarid and you're up in staten island where they get those fish and catch them consistently those fish are going up to spawn they have to get up the huts and all those fish in the fall those fish just go where all the bait is they could be easily as far as two three hundred yards off the beach and you can't reach them it's <laughs> It's it's really the biggest pain in the ass, but you can't really do much about it. But um, to end on this note, what you can do is, and what you can control is consistency. Being out there all the time, putting your time in, and sooner or later you're gonna be rewarded with a big fish, like I was last year at my forty. If you guys, many of my close friends have seen the pictures and so on and so forth. But it's all about effort and how much time you want to put in. So if you like this video, please like, comment, hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to follow me on my uh, public account, Surfcasting the Island. So it's at Surfcasting underscore the underscore island. Thank you and have a nice night. Stay tuned for next time.